Uh, okay, welcome everybody to Wall Street Reporter's next Super Stack live stream. Today is October 21st, 2020. Again, our goal here is to bring you stocks which have that 10x to 100x upside potential as we've had many such winners in the past six months. Uh, and we're going to find out today if Peak Fintech is going to be our next 10x winner uh, of uh, 2020. Uh, so the, the format for today is simple. Uh, you know, Johnson Joseph, the, the CEO of Peak, is going to uh, present. We'll open up for questions. Uh, and again, it's your questions that really make these events special. So please uh, ask your questions and then um, decide for yourself if Peak Fintech is going to be our next 10 bagger. Uh, with that said, uh, Johnson, uh, take it away. Okay. Thanks for having me back on, Jack. I really appreciate it. And once again, I want to apologize to the audience, for the people who have been waiting. We had some technical difficulties, but uh, everything's been resolved. I know that um, quite a few people um, are waiting to hear about the agreement that was announced yesterday. Uh, I will get to that in a minute, but uh, just for the sake of uh, those who may not totally be familiar with the company, um, I'd like to start by first um, answering, uh, by, by first identifying, I should say, the problem that, uh, that we're solving in China. Now, um, there are over 100 million small and micro businesses in China. And uh, the vast majority of them have a lot of trouble getting loans and accessing credit. Now, how do we solve that problem? Uh, what we've done is uh, we've developed a platform called Lending Hub. And uh, essentially what the, the Lending Hub does is it uses analytics and artificial intelligence to make it much easier for these small and micro businesses to have access to credit and obtain the loans. Now, we often refer to Lending Hub as an ecosystem. And the reason we do that is because what we have done essentially is uh, we've created um, a growing pool of businesses, excuse me, a uh, growing pool of businesses, lenders, and brokers. And we've made it extremely easy for all of them to conduct transactions with each other. And we simply charge a fee whenever there is a transaction that is made. Now, what the small businesses do essentially is they give us access to their data and uh, Lending Hub matches this information with the lending criteria of the businesses and it creates um, it creates credit offers, loans and credit offers for the businesses. Now, even though Lending Hub is an ecosystem that with, with various components, it all starts with the, the, uh, the SMEs, the small and micro businesses. Now, what is it that we do uh, in order to keep them coming back, to keep them signed up on the platform? Well, first thing is we've made it free for them to sign up. So there are no fees. They sign up for free. They give access to their information and off we go. Now, the second thing that we've done is uh, we've cut out totally the need to shop around for rates or anything like that. We bring all of the lenders to the SMEs. And thirdly is they have access to, not only do they have access to loans, but they have variety. Right, so they get to compare the rates and uh, uh, pick the best rates, the best loans that fit their specific needs. So essentially what we've done is we solved their problem, that's why they're on the platform, that's why they're signing up, and that's why they keep coming back to, uh, to lending up. Now, we've launched the, uh, the platform back in 2018. Uh, we launched it in the city of Wuxi, and uh, we knew it wasn't gonna be easy, and honestly, in 2018, it was not easy. Uh, we needed to get uh, to get uh, the financial institutions, the banks, to buy into the concept. This was something that was new to them. So what we've done is what we actually did in 2018 is um, we created our own financial um, subsidiary and we began to use the platform ourselves to extend loans to small and micro businesses in the city of Wuxi. Now, when it was all said and done in 2018. We ended up with uh, um, about 2,500 loans. It wasn't just us. We managed to get a couple of uh, local lenders um, to conduct uh, uh, transactions on the platform as well. But at the end of the day in 2018, that was our proof of concept year. We uh, facilitated roughly 2,500 uh, transactions and we generated about $1.6 million uh, in revenue for the year. Uh, the important thing that, that happened in 2018, one of the important things I should say, uh, in addition to the revenue that was generated, we ended up with data, with statistics that we could then use to attract 
new lenders and uh, other financial institutions, banks to the platform. So uh, in 2019, armed with that information, with the data, uh, we set out and we became more aggressive in recruiting lenders and financial institutions, banks, and so on, right? So um, there was a little bit more buying in 2019. We expanded uh, the services to the cities of Jiangying, to the, uh, the city of uh, Xi'an as well. And uh, more and more, we gained traction throughout the year, and we ended up generating roughly uh, almost $12 million uh, in revenue in 2019. So we went from $1.6 million in 2018 to $11.7 uh, million in 2019. Now, we've come to 2020, and it's all about expansion. Uh, with uh, the, uh, the results that we had, in 2019, the establishment of the uh, the need for the services, the traction that we gained, uh, all of the emphasis in 2020 is about growth. Now, at the end of 2019, what we did was uh, we acquired this uh, loan brokerage platform called Jinshar. And uh, Jinshar is a platform that allows loan brokers to submit leads and hopefully get those leads paired or matched with uh, lending institutions. So. We've taken that, that platform, we acquired it, uh, we merged it into the Lending Hub in April of this year. And what's interesting about Jinshar was um, they have over 40,000 loan, or call them loan sales reps that use their, uh, their application. And uh, they had relationships with uh, about 2,500 loan brokerage companies in 31 cities in China. So in addition to our acquisition of Jinshar, we're also leveraging the relationships that they had uh, to help us expand the Lending Hub services. Now, our objective for uh, for 2020 is to be in about 20 cities by uh, by the end of the year, and uh, we're forecasting about 40 million dollars of revenue uh, this year. Now, let's get to uh, to uh, to the agreement that was announced yesterday. Now, I mentioned uh, the ability that we have with Jinshar to expand our services. But uh, uh, yesterday, we announced an agreement with a company called uh, Beijing Dianjin Company. And uh, what uh, let's call them BDC for short. Uh, what BDC does is they are a national distributor of consumer electronics products. And uh, they have uh, roughly 60,000 retailers, online retailers, who buy product from them. And uh, those online retailers sell a combined $50 billion worth of uh, products on an annualized basis. And the agreement that we've made with BDC is we're going to now use um, the Lending Hub to start offering financing and credit to those online retailers. Now, based on the agreement that was signed, they have the ability, those online retailers have the ability to finance up to 90% of uh, the uh, the products that they purchased from uh, from BDC, and the financing would obviously be offered by uh, the banks and all of the other lending institutions that are currently part of the growing uh, lending hub ecosystem. Now, just uh, um, to uh, to give you an idea of what this uh, this agreement would represent for the company, uh, the 50 billion dollars uh, combined um, that uh, uh, the 60,000 retailers sell for. If we were to finance the very maximum of 90% of those sales, then what the company could generate, what Peak could generate in annual service fees uh, would be roughly uh, $1.3 uh, billion. And that's because we charge anywhere between 1% to 5% of the value of the transactions that we, that we facilitate. So um, this is obviously a very exciting uh, agreement uh, for the company. And uh, based on that agreement alone, now, again, we had forecasted this year that we're going to make $40 million in revenue. And for 2021, um, that number uh, jumped to, if I'm not mistaken, $55 million and then $80 million uh, for, uh, for 2022. But based on this agreement alone, uh, what, we, uh, what we are doing is we are reassessing those forecasts. We will obviously have to revise the forecasts uh, higher. Uh, we are currently in the process. We're talking to um, to our partners at, at BDC. Uh, we're conducting survey studies uh, just to get a better idea in terms of uh, what it, what we can expect over the next two to three years in terms of the percentage of those 60,000 online retailers that would have whatever percentage of their orders from the BDC 
uh, finance through the Lending Hub uh, platform. Now, once we have better visibility into, uh, into those numbers, the plan is to reissue forecasts, uh, again, like I said, obviously higher than what we had forecast for the next couple of years, uh, but uh, it totally changes the game for us. So instead of uh, uh, um, generating uh, revenue and the tens of millions of dollars, this agreement alone gives us the potential to now jump to another level and start talking about hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue. Now, the other interesting part about, um, about this agreement is that it now gives us a blueprint, right? So uh, obviously BDC is not the only um, distributor uh, in China and uh, electronics are not the only products that are sold online or wherever else in China. So it, it gives us a blueprint to have similar agreements with other distributors and uh, potentially also um, to have a relationship directly with those online portals. Now, we've always had our eyes um, on bigger and better things. And uh, honestly, um, making a deal with an online portal has always been in the back of our minds. But now what happens with this agreement is that it makes it that much closer. It, it takes us one step closer to making that a reality because BDC already has relationships with um, China's three largest portals, uh, namely Tmall, which belongs to Alibaba, uh, JD.com, and Pinduoduo. So um, based on this agreement, uh, we believe that uh, we will not only have, uh, we will not only be able to have similar agreements with other distributors, but more than likely um, that should allow us or help us um, to get into an agreement with a large online e-commerce portal. So uh, that would be the next step. Uh, for us in terms of uh, growth for, for the company. Now, before we get to the questions, uh, Jack, I just want to wrap up uh, really quickly, um, just to mention to people why they should be considering uh, Peak Fintech Group as an, as an investment opportunity. Uh, if you look at uh, companies in the space, um, in the Fintech space, uh, they trade at multiples of uh, 10, 15, sometimes 20, or even higher times uh, revenue. If you look at our company right now, we are trading, we're barely trading at, uh, I don't even think we're trading at uh, two times uh, uh, what we're forecasting for just this year, for 2020. And I'm not even talking about the revenue that we would be generating in 2021 and beyond with this with this new agreement that we just announced yesterday. So um, the company is listed on the Canadian Securities Exchange. Uh, we're also uh, co-listed on the OTC uh, QX market. And uh, our plan is to um, to uplist to the NASDAQ within the next, let's call it, uh, I would say uh, eight to 12 months. Uh, certainly we think we will qualify and uh, we should be able to uplist uh, to the NASDAQ. Now, that wraps up the presentation, Jack. So um, okay. um, for, for, for questions. Uh, okay, hey, Johnson, can you go back to that previous slide? I just want to keep that on the screen so people- Oh, you know, sure, 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 of course. Because I see- I think that's like that's like very important. Um, the thing that you Is mentioned. This slide uh, right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Blow that up for the for the full okay, screen. Okay, there you uh, go. Yeah, I mean, I I think that's that's one of the big takeaways. You know, we kind of at Wall Street where we kind of like get right to the bottom line. What's what's the story all about? What's the upside? And I think you know, just like our previous presenter, um, uh, I uh, I think one of one of the things that I think we talked about one of the things that that we considered when. You know, we brought you onto the next super stock platform. Was this opportunity to close that valuation gap? You know, there's that, that that's that clear runway to get that 10x upside. So again, a lot of these peers in the fintech space are trading on massive multiples over you know 10x. Absolutely. Uh, yes. And so if we can get that, uh, you know, close that gap. I mean, this is an easy you know five 10x on the stock uh, uh, right off that bat, and with the massive growth you have, I think. You know the market's going to start, uh, you know, paying attention. So, uh, well, the interesting why... thing, yeah, now that you mentioned that, uh, Jack, like, I mean, yes, the interesting thing about uh, what we're doing is uh, we now have a proven product, right? Like, I mean, it's as I mentioned before, it's all about growth, you know. So, um, so it, it's not like we have to develop the application. The application has been proven. Um, the um, the ecosystem is there. We have uh, thousands of small businesses um, that are already part of the ecosystem. Um, dozens of banks, financial institutions, you name it. So it's just about growth right now. So uh, yes, I, we do believe that this would be a great opportunity for uh, for investors to consider. Yeah, no, that's interesting. I mean, basically right now, peak is essentially, you know, ready to scale. So you're right at that inflection point where, 
where this, this thing could really uh, blow up. So uh, let's jump into some live audience questions. All right. Uh, first question coming in from Lee. Uh, he says, hi, Johnson. I'm reading, I am reading that banks like Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley are investing billions and billions into the exact space that Peak is in. Do you think that Peak would be able to attract banks of this size? Uh, and then also, I guess, you know, to the lending platform. And the follow-up is a uh, possibility of NASDAQ uplisting in 2021. Yes. Uh, yeah. The the uh, for the Nasdaq uh, question, that that's very easy. Uh, we totally believe that uh, we will meet the requirements and uh, expect to uh, to be on the Nasdaq um, at some point in 2021. Now, um, for the other uh, question about uh, uh, the big banks, yes, uh, the fintech space is hot right now. Like, I I mean, when you combine fintech with analytics, everything that's being done with AI, um, the automation of the lending process, we are definitely in the right space. Uh, there, there, there have been um, some uh, uh, some huge investments, as uh, Lee mentioned. Um, uh, big banks are stepping into the space. All of those financial institutions recognize that traditional lending, where uh, brick and mortar traditional lending, where uh, a client walks into a bank and uh, there's a pile of paperwork to analyze, and it takes uh, weeks uh, to get to get a decision. Um, that, that that's going away. It's all about analytics and speed and automation. We're in the right space. And uh, uh, just to uh, continue on Lee's point, if you look at uh, um, at uh, uh, micro lending in particular, and the space that we're in, China, uh, there's go there's about to be a, a, an IPO by a um, an Alibaba subsidiary and financial, which is expected to be the biggest IPO in history. I think they're trying to raise uh, $35 billion uh, US and it, 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 at a mind boggling valuation. And what are they doing? They're, they're in that space. They, they, they provide micro loans, uh, but instead of providing loans to uh, small businesses specifically, uh, they focus more on small consumer loans, you know, and uh, their businesses is, is, is valued at billions of dollars. So we're definitely in the right space here. Okay, um, Brandon is asking, uh, will Canada's relationship to China have any direct impact of what is being achieved going forward uh, with Peak? Well, I'm going to assume that uh, Brandon's mentioned it, it's talking about uh, uh, the little bit of friction that uh, there uh, that's happening right now between yeah, Canada, US, Canada, China. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, uh, it, it, it's actually the opposite, and, and, and here's what I mean by that. Uh, the uh, uh, the people that we're working with in China, um, our partners, and even uh, the government officials at the local level, some at the provincial level, uh, they they want to send a clear message. First of all, they understand the value that we are bringing to the cities uh, in which we operate, right? So we are helping small businesses get the credit, the loans that they need in order to um, to grow their businesses, to manage their businesses, which contributes to, to local economies and to the country's GDP, right? So first of all, they recognize the value of our software, of the concept that we're bringing um, uh, with the lending up. Secondly, uh, they are actually going out of their way to dispel that myth that, you know, because of their attentions at, call it the government level, uh, diplomatic attentions, uh, it does not affect business the, the business relationships uh, between Canada and China. So it's the opposite. They're going out of their way. They're rolling out the red carpet for us. Uh, they've helped us every step of the way um, to make sure that uh, a lending hub, a lending hub is is known in the cities that uh, that we operate. So we have a very good relationship uh, with uh, with the partners. And even listen, uh, a couple of weeks ago we actually announced. Uh, this financial center that uh, we help launch, uh, we help uh, the uh, the city of of uh, Jianying launch, right? So that financial center is all around the uh, the Cuba lending hub, where uh, the businesses in the city can now register on the hub and uh, have access to uh, to funding from um, the banks and financial institutions who do business in that city. So uh, to answer the question, Brandon, no, um, we don't anticipate any negative impact on our business because of the tensions between the two countries right now. You know, I, th I think yeah, a couple of people have asked that, and you know, I, I think that was, that was one of the, the, the first questions I had because I, I kind of weighing down on the valuation is that kind of perception that uh, you know there's this tension and what could happen but when you think about it actually the the some of the 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 Chinese listed the Chinese stocks are like 
some of the high flyers right now. So I think that's more of a, you know, it's not kind of the reality of what's happening. And um, uh, also, it's just a misconception. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a perception, but it's, it's not real. Yeah, no, not, not not on the ground. And one of the interesting things is their economy is actually doing well now. It's starting to boom. There was well, a lot absolutely. of absolutely. Yes, absolutely. The Chinese economy is virtually back to normal now, uh, post post pandemic normal. So yeah, if, if things are going well, we're definitely in the right place uh, at the right time right now. Okay, and uh, Mike is asking, what's the uh, default rates on the loans 2020, 2021? 2020, 21. Um, that's an interesting question. Um, the the default rate we by the by the way we measure defaults uh, when the loans are are, are past 30 days, uh, and uh, the default rate went up significantly, obviously because of COVID. Um, before uh, before COVID, uh, the uh, the lending hub had a loan default rate below two percent. Now with COVID, with the difficulties that the small businesses had, it was hovering around, I think, uh, um, 20, 30 percent. Don't, don't don't quote me on this. Um, uh, this is something that our CFO would be a better place uh, to answer. But it did go up significantly. But uh, we anticipate that uh, as business, as I mentioned before, as business gets back to normal slowly, uh, the default rates will uh, will get back to the level that they were at pre-pandemic. Okay. Uh, a couple of people asking about uh, any plans for future financing. I, I guess they're concerned about potential dilution. Any any plans for future financing uh, in the rest of 2020? Um, you know what? I, I, we're not sure at this point because um, we are looking at the uh, what would be required in terms of uh, capital injection for for this new agreement that was signed. Right now, I mean, uh, it looks like we were in pretty good shape with the funds that we have at our disposal. We had just closed a uh, a private placement um, about a month ago, uh, so we have uh, uh, enough capital um, that would allow us to um, to get uh, to get that agreement started. But we we also brought on um, some strategic investors, strategic uh, partners. Uh, we uh, we brought on uh, 3D Capital. Uh, Sheldon Enwintash, who has a fantastic reputation, who has a very, very good nose for, uh, for, for, for businesses like ours. So we will be consulting with our partners and look at the growth opportunities that are in front of us right now. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, BDC is not the only distributor uh, that we can do business with. So there's a possibility before the year's over that we have other opportunities and it might be worth it to do a private placement. But at this stage, we uh, we're not in a position to to answer that definitively one way or another. Okay. Uh, so okay. Oh, here's an interesting question from uh, is it Mohan is asking an interesting question. Oh, Mohan is asking um, uh, what is uh, what's the percentage of recurring revenues of your of your sales? What percentage of that is recurring? That's an that's an excellent question. That is an excellent question, and and, and that's the beauty about what we're doing. I would say uh, for the moment we're looking at maybe 80 to 90 percent repeat revenue, particularly with the agreement that we just signed, right? Because these are these are retailers, and uh, it, it's it's all about inventory, inventory turnover, right? So they buy laptop computers, smartphones, other consumer electronics products, uh, they sell them, and they have to replenish, right? So uh, we're looking at a model that has uh, um, a, a very, very high rate of repeat business. So um, we have a fairly high uh, uh, rate of repeat business and recurring revenue. Uh, okay, uh, Joe is asking, uh, when will you start offering uh, the service in Europe or North America? That's an that's another excellent question. Um, again, uh, we have we're we're consulting with uh, with our advisors right now, uh, and uh, our financial partners. Obviously, if if we decide to expand to uh, to other regions, to other regions, it's going to require additional investments, uh, partnerships, and uh, so uh, right now, I mean, China is our focus. Uh, obviously, like I mean, that has huge, huge, huge potential. Again, we're talking about a country with 1.3 billion uh, um, residents, uh, over 100 million micro businesses. So there is a lot of there, 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 there's a lot of work for us to do in China, um, just to make sure that uh, we secure 
a, 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 a decent size in the market. Again, uh, we're, we're talking 100, over 100 million businesses. And the revenue that we are generating right now, uh, we're talking, you know, we're, we're talking about businesses in the thousands, right? So uh, right now we have, I don't know, like uh, roughly like 30 or 40,000 businesses. That was before uh, the, uh, the agreement that was announced yesterday. And let's say we add another 60,000 uh, with the agreement. So we're looking at a pool of roughly 100, uh, 100,000 small businesses. And that's just uh, that's obviously just a fraction of the market, right? So uh, the point I'm trying to make is that there is so much room for growth in China right now. So we want to focus our attention on making sure we grow that market before we really start to look at uh, going to uh, um, other markets in Asia or Europe or, or, or North America. Okay. Uh, so yes, yeah, so a couple of people asked about, about uh... Uh, so Camille is asking, when did Sheldon uh, come on board as an advisor? Well, he, he, he came on board. Well, you see, uh, uh, obviously, that's a name that people recognize. Uh, he came on that's, board. I was, that's I was kind of, when I, a couple of people asked, that was kind of smug because we, ha ha we have mutual uh, companies in common. You know, he was, uh, it's, by coincidence, you know, we've, we've had an interesting experience with Sheldon, but uh, he did do very well with um, Imagine AR that, you know, came on our platform that, and that was a uh 17 x 1700 well, like i said like i said sheldon's got a good nose for uh for 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 these things right now um we he, he came on board uh when we did um the last uh, private placement that we did um I, I i've spoken to sheldon uh personally on a couple of occasions he's got some fantastic ideas and uh, uh we are looking very much looking forward to uh to working with him Okay, no, it's actually that, that could be a, a good match because he's you know he understands the fintech space. You know he's he's an accountant Absolutely. by background, so he you know, he's this is this listen, is actually listen. Uh, we, we're we're, we're always that. open. We're always open. Listen, business is about uh, business. yeah, things are good, but it's about people, right? So we are we brought on um, earlier this year, obviously. Like I mean, we brought on a very high profile director, Michael Pesner. Um, we're building the uh, the the executive management team. Uh, over there in China, obviously, like, I mean, I, if I say the names, they're not going to mean uh, um, much to to people here in North America. But we're very cognizant of uh, of um, uh, the fact that good companies uh, good companies are built by good people, right? So we're trying to uh, continuously uh, add people who can bring value to um, to what we're doing, what we're building. And certainly, Sheldon is somebody that uh, that came on board and that we believe. Uh, is going to help the company uh, uh, tremendously in the future. Yeah, definitely. So I mean, like you know, we again in the, in the case of of, of uh, you know uh, Imagine AR, that was uh, you know, you know, ho hopefully we'll have the same results. You will have a 17x upside from here in uh, in peak. Uh, if uh, if uh, you know, you know, history well, doesn't you know, uh, rhyme. 17, we'd, we'd we'd like to beat that. Okay, good. Yeah, we need because you know. I mean, is 10x to 100x at least so there you know, you why not i mean we were, you know we've had 20x so we need 100 we need a 100 bagger right now uh this year we'll, we'll do our best uh, jack to uh, to help you make that happen okay perfect uh any other questions a last chance here uh no uh, johnson i guess that's it i mean uh, that was uh no, that, uh no here we go we've got one last question oh uh, good, great question from anthony uh, what should we keep an eye on for the near-term updates and news to be provided? You know, what, what kind of news flow you have coming up next, uh, let's call it six weeks? One of our, one of our favorite questions. Okay. Uh, obviously, like, I mean, uh, I can't, uh, um, I have to be careful. I can't talk. We are working on a number of things and I'll, I'll let's, let's, I'll just give you a hint, right? So, um, we mentioned, I mentioned, um, that, uh, uh, this agreement that was announced yesterday is a blueprint for potential uh, new uh, similar agreements. Uh, I'll just say this, uh, consumer electronics are not the only um, products that are sold that are very popular uh, to selling uh, to online, that are sold online, excuse me. So um, there are other distributors um, that we can, you know, uh, sign similar agreements with. So if I was an investor, I would keep an eye out for uh, similar uh, agreement announcements. Uh, between now and the end of the year and uh, certainly the other thing is 
if we can get into an agreement with uh, with one of those uh, giant online portals, whether it's uh, Tmall, JD.com, or Pingduoduo, uh, that would be a home run for us. So um, those are the things that uh, um, I would keep an eye out for uh, between now and the let's call it the end of the year. Okay, fantastic. All right, uh, Jonathan, thank you for joining us once again. The great news, uh, you know, uh, this week, and uh, we look forward to having you back on hopefully very soon on our next uh, live stream or live chat like we had last time. I look forward to being back, Jack. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Johnson. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, next Super Stock live stream. And we'll see you again hopefully soon.